Welcome back, everyone, to another 12 Rules for Life chapter analysis. Today, we're going over chapter 5. Do not let your children do things that make you dislike them. We've all been there, right? Trying to have a nice, quiet meal or watch a movie in the theater when someone kid... Sorry. Trying to have a nice, quiet meal or watch a movie in a theater when someone's kid starts running up and down the aisles making noise and just being disruptive. You start to think, okay, mom or dad gets your kid under control, but they don't. Should you say something? Should you say nothing? Everyone wants and thinks their kids are the best behaved. A lot of parents seem to be blind when other parents don't want to be around their children. And no one, no one wants to be the parent who all other parents hate. One line I highlighted was, more thoughtful parents would not have let someone they truly cared for become the object of a crowd's contempt. Kids' minds are like sponges. They thrive on comparing themselves with adults, seeing who they should be, and testing the boundaries of their parents' patience. A great example of order becoming too toxic is when a child hits his or her mother, father, and either doesn't receive punishment or is given what they want because it's easier for the parent. This is an order, a routine, that the child has learned. An interesting point that Peterson has on teaching a child a good habit is this. To a child, a week's worth of punishment in which your parent holds the door closed while you try to escape feels like forever. But for an adult, it's simply an hour each night for one week. Five hours is all it takes to reinforce a good habit. This is why laws exist too, guys. A punishment is in place and we all know if we murder someone, we go to prison, right? If a child knows when they do something wrong, they'll be punished, they'll be less likely to do this thing. Or more likely to hide it. Zero consequences for behaviors equals less than well-behaved children. Another point Peterson makes is that these days, parents seem to be more obsessed with being their child's friend than parent. A friend doesn't always care for you the same magnitude as a parent. A friend doesn't have unconditional love for you. A parent shapes a child to be the best person they can be. A friend doesn't always do that. And if you wish to become a parent, be prepared for the day, or many days, where your child will say they hate you. Because that'll happen. Children are testing their boundaries, after all. Organize your child's mind before they become an adult, because in adulthood, it's far more difficult to reorganize your mind. Trust me, I'm in the process of doing it right now. In order to properly raise a socially acceptable child, a system of reward must be put into place. A child isn't going to behave unless they receive positive reinforcement whenever they do. Watch your children. When they do something that makes you like them, reward it with positive words or a positive action. As a personal example, my parents were far more worried about keeping me safe instead of independent. I have an older sister and an older brother. As the youngest, I could do no wrong as a child. Once I gained a group of friends, I was a freaking tyrant. A bully regarded as bossy by my peers. I was angry when things didn't go my way and horribly sad when I didn't receive praise. Because of this, when my sister fell pregnant with the first grandchild, I felt like my parents were having another baby. I was invisible after that. I even recall my grandmother telling my sister that she was the favorite grandchild as I sat next to her. Now, let me take this opportunity to tell you, I love my sister. She is a wonderful, kind person. Now, maybe I deserved all of this for being a bully for so long. But maybe I didn't. In middle school, I became reserved to the point of having no friends while my brother and sister thrived. It made me feel like less of a human, creating a malleable mind, I guess. I was then chosen by an abuser to be his next victim. It was the love and attention I craved from my parents. And it worked out just about as well as you'd think. My views on what makes a good partner for me have been reinforced since I escaped that situation. And I've been exceptionally lucky to find someone who wishes me to love myself instead of wanting to mold me into his idea of a perfect partner. Another line I highlighted from the book is, Be good company when something fun is happening, so you're invited to more fun things. My God, I wish someone would have put that into words for me a million years ago. 
Had that happened, I wouldn't be needing to constantly remind myself of it every second. Trying to create a good habit in adulthood is super difficult. And, ladies and gentlemen, probably mostly gentlemen, I don't know, I'll leave you with this final quote. The only time no ever means no in the absence of violence is when it is uttered by one civilized person to another. Okay, bye!